Hey guys, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars, and uh, I got a brand new build series uh, I'm gonna start uploading. Uh, it's about this guy right here, the Gecko, and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's a, it's gonna be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me, and uh, we'll see you there. All right, hey guys, going to uh, start shielding the cavities on this gecko and uh, I'm using the uh, shielding paint uh, this happens to be from Stu Mac I, um, and I, I end up using a lot of their products just because it's difficult to find uh, this type of thing elsewhere this this one specifically I looked for larger quantities different suppliers and uh, could find it for really huge commercial applications but it was uh, it was just as expensive and all that kind of stuff. So uh, reset things up here and dial you in on what's going on and get at it. All right, so I already started uh, taping things off here. I uh, taped the uh, switch and uh, control holes on the face so that the shielding paint doesn't dribble through because that can be a mess and. Uh, Don't want to get any of this stuff on the new finish. So uh, I'm gonna lay a lot of tape down just loosely uh, so that I don't, I mean, I'll be careful, but you know, I don't want to have to be like I'm doing brain surgery here. careful than that so it's probably a little bit overkill I've done about three guitars with this and I'm down, there we go I'm down to about this level which isn't quite halfway I probably won't even get to halfway doing this guitar so I probably did more than three okay and stir it up. I'm going to get a, away from the guitar to do that. I read lots of different comments on this stuff before I purchased it. Uh, it seemed to be a pretty good consensus that you have to do three cuts of this before you really get good uh, connect. Uh, what's that word? Connectivity. Um, Anyway, between, you know, if you're reading a meter before you get it, uh, you know, really good contact all the way through everything. I'm just going to do the switch cavity and the, and the actual uh, control cavity. Not going to do the pickup recesses. Uh, they're you know, humbucking. Uh, they're, sh you know, everything's shielded. Not going to worry about that uh, if it presents an issue. I'm doing the wiring scheme, if you recall. I'm not splitting these. I'm doing series and parallel on the wiring, and they're hum canceling in both uh, situations. So I'm kind of just doing this because it's a custom guitar, and you know you do the best you can on everything you do. And uh, I don't really think that I would have to have shielding in these cavities to make this uh, not be humming. So. 
first coat. And even though I taped these um, these holes, you know, through the face, you, I'm careful not to uh, not to puddle this stuff down there because uh, it could wick under the tape. Chances are it wouldn't uh, wick far enough to be a problem, but why not be careful? Anyway, I was talking about the, uh, the conductivity of this stuff and um, I've, I've taken to just doing two coats. I believe the last guitar I just did two coats and it was just fine. So, um, you, gotta, you gotta let them dry anyway before you do another coat so I can check them as I go and, and see how it's, how it's working. And the other thing I do is I take a, I run a screw into the sidewall of the control cavity and I solder a lug on a ground wire and I ground that to the, to the pots. And I will be putting a shielding tape on the covers. Uh, and right now, because they're taped, I'm not getting, for instance, on this one, I'm not getting shielding paint up on this little edge here, but um, once I uh, get all of these uh, painted, I'll roll it over the top so I get some shielding paint up on the ledge where the cover hits, and that'll complete that cavity. Okay, that looks good. So, it's a pretty, pretty simple procedure here, you just, uh, you just paint this on and it's just got uh, metal particulate, um, you know, suspended in this. I don't know what kind of metal for sure, um, probably, probably not metal, probably carbon since it's all black. Um, but I'm just, I'm guessing at this point. I did, did study this out, but it's been several years. And um, I prefer to remember chord progressions or something rather than what's floating around in this pace. So, um, that's it. Just painting cavities and um, so it'll be two, possibly three coats. So I'll meter it after the second coat dries and uh, see what we got. Okie doke. Okay. Bring you back in later on. We'll maybe we'll meter these things and see how how it works. All right, guys. I'm uh, just uh, kind of hand piloting out the holes that I had uh, through the face of the body here. Just got a small drill bit, and uh, I would probably be using my my cordless drill for this. Although this is working pretty well. Cordless drills out in the car, and uh, I just felt like doing this right now, and so I'm not chasing it at the moment. And uh, so um, when I grain filled this, I let the grain filler go into these holes, and then when I started cheating lacquer, I just let that, you know, I'll, I'll kind of take care of that. And the reason being is I uh, didn't have to worry about water getting down the holes if they were full. So, I do have to step up to the next size drill bit here now, uh, which I believe was an eighth inch for my string holes.
when last we spoke, I was in the process of painting the uh, shielding paint on the inside of the cabins, and uh, I've done a second coat on those, and here we are. So, I'm not 100% sure that was a eighth inch, might not have been an eighth inch, so anyway, we're just going to work our way up here. I only had two of these, the outside ones that were actually drilled all the way through the body, the two outside strings, two E-strings. Um, and those of course are going through onto my, onto my clean towel here. Um, And a little bit of lacquer chipping, which uh, it will be, you know, way, way under the bridge, so I'm not too worried about that. But I'm just taking, I got a 1 8 inch drill bit here, and I'm just running it backwards just to uh, get a little chamfer on the edge of that lacquer so it doesn't want to chip any farther. Pretty good one right there. Even going backwards, I got a chip. Again, not a huge deal. camera I, I went ahead and sanded and I'm putting these little blocks under here the little bench cookies just so that I'm not I don't have the whole face of the guitar down on the, the towel or the t-shirt here um, you know I'm after it's assembled I'm gonna have to go over and hand buff the whole thing up again I just you can't get away from you know leaving little little marks here and there I started to say, off camera, I uh, sanded in the uh, recess here for the string retainer and I uh, got it uh, sanded out and I used, uh, used the nail file thing and then I used uh, a utility knife or exacto knife shank with some paper wrapped around it. And so that should go in there now just fine, snug, which is what we want, and there we go, it's already stuck. Huh. Well, this is dumb. Perfect.
I'll go grab some pliers and grab, pull it out of there that way. Okay, grabbing the outside edges of this thing, so. All right, I might sand that a little bit more before I try to push it in there. Uh, of course, once it's in, it's in for good. Um, I was going to actually wax the sides of that so that it would push in. Um, I have already have the ground wire. The ground wire is going to go right up in there underneath this bar. He says. I've already had it in here once. I don't know why it's giving me trouble now. There it is. Want to be up under there, but we want to make sure that we're not. Uh, not going to be where the hole gets drilled through. Don't want to chew it up. There we go. So right there, and yeah, all right, I'm going to wax that and slide that in anyway, meanwhile, this is what I've been doing, and uh, once I have this in, um, I'll just use it as my, as my drill alignment tool, and go ahead and connect the holes that are coming from the face of the guitar to that, and that'll get all the string uh, string holes lined up. So, that's what's happening. screw this bridge on and uh, you could use paraffin actually I'm gonna grab paraffin I forgot I had it out here or you can use floor wax which is what that was eventually thanks to him and um, that was uh, one of his tricks and a lot of people uh, know about it now because um, there's a lot of clever old guys around but that definitely uh, helps you get get the screw in without uh, splitting the wood. Of course, having the right size pilot hole helps with that as well. So, yep, 
and it's important to get the right size pilot hole. You're driving into something like maple or walnut as I am here. Um, it's real easy to, to crack split wood. This not in the middle like this, but especially if you're going into a thinner piece of wood. Um, but it's also really easy to snap the head right off of a screw um, in, into a really hard wood like this. Some of your other woods, mahogany, alder, poplar, pine, um, just softer woods it wouldn't be a real issue, but uh, it, it would be in this board if you were to uh, not you know, use the right size pilot and then also uh, some wax on the screw just makes it easier to put in. And I'm just trying to blow off the excess wax that uh, comes off as you, as you thread the screw in. Uh, let's have a, a brief discussion on, on uh, the force that's on this bridge when it's strung up. And um, well, the one downside to using paraffin over the uh, just paste wax is that it does does pile up around the head of the screw as it goes in, so I have to get in there with a toothpick and clean up around the heads of a couple of these screws. The, um, the force on this bridge when it's strung up, well, I've heard lots of different numbers and I, I haven't researched it enough to know whether or not, you know, which one's accurate. It's going to depend on string gauge as far as how much string tension there is. So, you know, anywhere from 140 to 180 um, pounds of string tension at, uh, at standard detuning. And if this were a, were not a string through the body type situation, right? So six of these strings are coming through the body on this bridge. And uh, consequently, you really don't have a lot of string tension on the bridge itself because it's coming through the holes in the back of the bridge and then they're coming over the top of the saddles and they're exerting downforce there. So you absolutely have no tension pulling the bridge off of the guitar or really even pulling the bridge forward. Yeah, a little bit there. Um, then I'm going to have three strings coming through the back of the bridge. Now, if this was strictly a top load bridge, then you have, you have that, that same pressure, that 140 to 180 pounds of pressure pulling against the bridge all the time. Um, that's kind of one of the great things. I could, you know, if you were going to do a really, you know, soft wood like a pine body, you could totally go with the string through. You would never have to worry about um, having the bridge come off of the thing. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd just dabble in that uh, type of logic here for a second. And um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, what I can tell, just thought it might be an interesting topic there for a sec. So yeah, since the strings are coming up through the body and over the saddle, the tension is actually on the string retainer and a solid piece of uh, maple, in this case, maple and walnut. Uh, pretty solid combination of wood there. And those are um, Virtually no tension on those on the uh, screws there. So, uh, from a design standpoint, I think that's a really good design. So you don't have to worry about your bridge being a uh, you know under stress all the time. I am going to have the three uh, high strings, the E, uh, B, and G string, 
coming through the back uh, of the bridge on this one, so there will be some pressure there. Anyway, just thought we'd dabble there for a second. And there we are, bridge. Um, cool, making progress. Thank you.